Did you just purchase or you're looking to purchase a Sunjo Scarifier unit and you're wondering some common questions? Well, stay tuned. I've got the answers for you coming up. watching this video, I would really recommend that you go pick this thing up ASAP. They did sell out last year. They sold out super quick and they were being scalped online. These were selling for upwards to three to $500 a unit. I'll leave this down in the link below, but you should go pick one up ASAP before the season starts when you definitely need one of these. It will be a lifesaver in your lawn, your neighbor's lawn, your mom's lawn, your dad's lawn, your brother's, your sister's, your friend's lawn. You definitely are going to want to go pick one of these up as soon as possible. So here are the contestants. This is the original AJ801E 13 inch. It does have this old traditional push in, lower and raise it. So that's negative 10 and 10 right there. So you can see that you have that adjustment. It is only 13 inch wide on a deck. There's no adjustments as noted on the 15 inch. And it does have smaller back wheels so it doesn't roll as well. This is the new 15 inch AJ805E. So this one has a 15 inch deck, so it does remove an extra two inches from the smallest one, which is the original, and one inch bigger than the battery powered. It does have these fancy adjustments on the knobs. You just loosen these knobs right here, and you can adjust it up and down to your height, which the other two do not have. Height adjustment isn't as slick as it is on the battery powered, but it is a step in the same direction as the original. The cartridge has kind of a triangular cartridge in here. This little piece drops out, you pull this and slide it out and you slide the new cartridge in. Last model, it's going to be the 14 inch battery 24V X2 DTS 15. Super easy height adjustments. It's one, two, three, four. And as you get closer to five, it's the lowest setting. As you go to one, it raises it up. So super easy, two batteries. They do have the button on it to tell what the battery level is. As noted on the 15 inch, this does not have a height adjustment, so it's one size fits all on this one. 14 inches on this battery powered model. Rear wheel is a lot bigger than the other two, so it rolls a lot better. So the one thing to note on this one, it does have this knob right here for a quick change. Take off that knob, that assembly swings out, this whole piece slides out, you slide the new one in. No extra tools necessary to change these cartridges. Handles ergonomics are nice on all of them. They all have this padded fill. They do all have the pull trigger and you push this and then you pull your handle and that's how you engage. So from a standpoint of them all next to each other like this, the differences that I can feel is that they're all kind of flimsy. They're all kind of like, kind of easy to bend and stuff. But overall, the battery powered one is the most sturdy. It definitely has the most sturdiness to it. This one has a little bit of flex in its handle and the original had the most flex in its handle and it has the most play. So do I need to dethatch my lawn? This is a common question. How you have to look at it is if you have more than a half an inch worth of thatch down in your area, that's where you want to look at dethatching your lawn. That's where it gets unhealthy. It has too much of a thatch layer to allow the grass to breathe appropriately, and it will not let water 
or nutrients or any kind of air pass through the root system, that will kill your lawn. That's where you want to detach. If you don't have above a half an inch and you're not running into these issues, you do not have to absolutely dethatch at all. Can you? Yes, but it, do you need to? No. So if you don't need to do something, is it worth it? I'd say no. And how do I use a Sunjo dethatcher? That is quite simple. You go ahead and unbox it, you get it all set up with the dethatching attachment instead of the scarifying attachment. Then you go ahead and grab an extension cord, go out to your lawn, mow it down so that it's um, shorter than normal, at least down to two and a half inches or less. Push the button on the side, pull the handle, and it sounds like a vacuum. It starts up and then you just go over it. Just go over it at one of the settings, 10, 5, 0, negative 5, or 10. Once you go over those settings, you just go over your lawn, making passes, just like you're mowing, just passes back and forth, just like you're mowing. And then once you're done, you either rake up the clippings, you bag it with the little bagger that's included, or you mow them up. Would you look at that? This has pulled out quite a bit of dead grass. This is definitely doing a good job. Pretty impressed for a couple of passes. Let's keep it going. Get your wife's out on this, guys. Would you look at that? Wow, that's gonna allow this bad boy to breathe. That looks way good. Anyone else think that this sounds like a large vacuum? Wow. I am blown away. So as a quick tip, once you do it and you have all this on the lawn, just go ahead and raise your mower up one level from where you mowed it at last. Let it dry out so that there's not much moisture to it, then just mow it up. It's gonna chop a little bit back down and in, but it's not gonna be much because the blade will have a hard time chopping this dry grass. It's not gonna really chop it up, it's gonna suck it back into that bag. And it's a lot easier than have to rake it, right? plug out. What does the scarifier do that's different than these dethatchers? These dethatchers get in there and they remove this dead material that you're seeing in here and they're just taking this dead material out of the root zone. They're just pulling that up. So they just get down into this root zone and they pull up this thatch layer that you're seeing right here. 
okay? That's what these machines are designed to do, is pull this material out right here. A scarifier is meant to get down and rip out individual grass plants at the root zone, like that, in trenches. And what it's doing is it's thinning out our grass so that our grass can then regrow in and not choke itself out. Our grass has gotten too thick is what the scarifier is used for. It pulls out grass plants like this down little trench lines. How often should you dethatch? You dethatch it once a year. What you're looking for is for that thatch layer, that dead grass, the root matter that's down in the soil to be over a half an inch thick. An easy way to test it is to just pull back the grass and look. You can also take your fingers and rake it. And if you're pulling up excessive dead grass and debris out of your lawn, then you definitely should be doing a dethatch. For cool season grasses, you wanna do it in early spring or early fall. For warm season grasses, you want to do it in early summer after the second mow. How do you revive your lawn after you have dethatched it? That's pretty easy. What you do is wait until it starts to green up, give it a little bit of fertilizer, give it that nitrogen it's looking for. Also keep it nice and moist. What we want to do is make sure the soil moisture is staying pretty adequate. We don't want it to dry up at this time because it's already stressed because we just hit it really hard. Is removing dead grass good for the lawn? Yes, it allows the lawn to breathe, it opens it up, it allows water to penetrate down, nutrients to penetrate down, it allows the grass to be able to thicken back up and fill in those areas of the dead spots. So yes, dethatching is a very good thing, so removing that dead grass is great. Do I need to remove dead grass before overseeding? Yes, if the seed does not have soil to seed contact, it will not germinate. It needs to be able to touch the soil to be able to pop and germinate. So the best thing to do is to open up that lawn, remove all that dead matter out of there, and then go ahead and get your overseed done. Just like removing dead grass, should I dethatch before overseeding? Yes, same principle applies there. You definitely should get rid of that dead matter so that you can get that seed down and next to the soil. That's where it's gonna grow. Should I cut my lawn before I dethatch. Yes, what you want to do is be able to get, remove as much of that layer that's going to block that dethatcher from hitting so that we can get down to that layer of dead grass. If you have a huge layer of grass in the way, you're going to be ripping a lot of your good grass. So what you want to do is get that out of the way and so that it can actually have the layer of dead grass that it can take out. Can you dethatch a wet lawn? Damp, yes saturated no don't do it it'll rip the roots and stuff out it'll bind up your dethatcher it'll make it so it's not a good dethatching also don't do it when it's excessively dry because it'll stress the lawn out and you'll damage areas in your lawn to change the cartridge you simply flip the unit over loosen these two bolts right here and right here with this suitable wrench it's going to be a 10 millimeter Lift this side out, slide it out from the drive shaft. To install the new one, all you do is simply just slide in the drive shaft into the existing drive shaft. Line up this edge with the flat side up. and it drops right in. Take your bolts and washers from the old assembly that you just pulled out and install them. Very simple to change out these cartridges. Only takes less than a minute to do. It will not do large lawns. It will take too long to do huge lawns. I feel confident using it on about 5,000, 6,000 square feet, but it would just take a really long time with anything bigger. If you take it in chunks, oh yeah, by all means, you could use this on big chunks of land and just eat them in small bites. But if you're looking for something super fast on a lot of land, probably not this guy right here. It's a little bit too slow and that's where the professional machines will really come in handy. Can you use this any time of year? As long as your grass is actively growing, yes, you can use this. Um, there's gonna be a uh, misconception that you shouldn't use these during the summer. Yes, it does stress your grass. 
I'm gonna give it that. But will it kill your grass to use this during the summer? No, you will stress it, but after it unstresses, it'll be able to breathe a lot better if you've not used it any other time. There are only two downsides to this that I could find. One, you're only limited to how far your cord is. This is a 100 foot extension cord. Two, the bagger that actually comes on this machine only holds a little bit of dead grass. So it only makes one or two passes before you have to empty it. So it is a better option to do it like how I did it, leave it on your lawn, then just take your lawn mower over the top of it on a setting higher than where you normally mow or where you just mowed it down to, just so that it sucks all that up and pulls it in, put it in your bag. Make sure you remove your mulching plug. That's gonna be key for you. So hopefully I've been able to answer a lot of your common questions or concerns that you would have about this machine. If you have any other questions or comments about this machine, please leave it down in the comment section below and or reach out to me at jeremyofthegreenerlawn at gmail.com. We will answer them there. If you like this kind of video, then go ahead and watch this video right here. It will show the Sunjo in action, and it was the first one that I put out, and it does a good job of showing the machine in action. As always, I'm Jeremy of the Greener Lawn, Maker Green.